The average solo GP is dead. Being handcuffed to a practice that only makes money while you're drilling crushes your freedom. Being trapped at the office is no way to experience life. And doing more fillings and crowns ain't the answer to freedom. Stop it. Freedom comes when your practice makes money without you. Freedom is choosing how many days and how you dental. Ready to forge your freedom? Then keep listening to become a super GP and super CEO. This is the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Let's go. Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome back to yet another amazing episode of the Titanium Practice Podcast. I am your host and personal freedom coach, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. So yesterday, I went for a walk with my daughter, and we always try to do a walk pretty much once a week, just to check in with each other, see how we're doing. I need it just as much as she does, (laughs) but I really like being able to connect with her. I like being able to have that special one-on-one time with her. But God, what I was noticing is is when we were walking, I just kind of looked up at the sky. One of my favorite sayings is, not a cloud in the sky. And this was this beautiful morning. You know, it's winter. It was 60 degrees, though, in the morning. So it was just this nice, perfect temperature to be out for a walk with one of my favorite people on the entire planet. And not a cloud in the sky was to be seen. And I got to thinking... And her and I were talking for just a little bit about what happens when there are clouds in the skies. What happens when you start to see storm clouds approaching? What happens when you find yourself in a storm? And obviously, I'm talking much more about your personal life, about happening things happening at the office, things coming at you when you're at a storm and you're fighting things at that moment. And I got to thinking, I was like, you know, when a hurricane comes to Florida, it's insane. And I'm sure there's other events where you can see it in other spots around the country. And I'm sure it happened when I was a kid and I was growing up. And I don't, I don't really remember those things happening. But you also saw it during COVID where people lose their minds and they all run to the store and buy all the water they can possibly think of. Now those people never use that much water in a given week, but everyone just just buys water and water and water and water and it's just and they just clear out the grocery store shelves and it's insane watching this all happen. And it just just happens all the time. So we normally get about one storm that at least causes something to cause our office to shut down once a year. So somewhere right around my wife's birthday, right around the middle of September, you can normally start to set your clock about the fact that we're going to have some type of storm, even if it's not a hurricane. It can even be these tropical storms, which if you've never lived in Florida, these the news makes it sound like these are life altering events and absolutely if you're in ground zero they can absolutely alter your life they absolutely can so i'm not saying that like where it hits it doesn't cause problems it absolutely can but my gosh the thing that i see i grew up in the midwest and like when a tornado hit tornadoes always came with these thunder and lightning storms and they 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 were like those storms were really really scary And the ones that come with a tropical storm and even a hurricane, they're windy. They are. I mean, the wind goes up, yes, but they just rain. That's all they are is they create a lot, a lot, a lot of rain. But there's almost never any thunderstorms with it. The storms themselves aren't, you know, these, you know, these storms that have a ton of of, uh, lightning that goes around with them. I, much more scarier storms to me. We get lightning all the time. We there's there's houses all over. I I know of many houses in my in my area that get hit by lightning just on a random Tuesday storm. And those concern me a whole lot more. And the kids know the kid. I like when I was a kid, I'd still play outside if it was thunder and lightning. Now you get your ass inside in Florida. 
Because you know somebody's house who got hit by lightning. You know somebody's tree or, or something got struck by lightning. And people obviously get struck by lightning too. But you know, get inside when it's thunder and lightning. But you watch these people just tear through the grocery store, getting all these things, fighting people, waiting in line. And it makes me think about that sunny day yesterday when I'm going for a walk with my daughter and there's not a cloud in the sky. When do you think is the best time to prepare for a storm? Right as it's on your doorstep and it's coming? Or should you be doing that when it's a nice sunny day outside? When nobody else is panicking and rushing to do all those things? So it's important to have that concept in your mind of the fact that there are going to be bad days. Now, fortunately, the good days completely outweigh the bad days. But there are going to be bad times in life, and we need to make sure that we are preparing ourselves when the skies are clear and sunny for those days when there is rain and hell being dumped upon you. Because it's coming, and it's going to happen. And that's okay. That's part of life. And we go through it, and we all get stronger for it. We all learn something for it. But you need to be preparing when it's much easier to do. Some of the things that start to happen that make me think about what are some things that are coming. As you get older and you go through life, your need to be able to drop what you're doing and going and helping a family member, a friend, something like that, increases. I've talked before about the fact that, like, you watch these old people. Man, they hit 70 and bam. All of a sudden, you're dealing with people who need you. And yes, on a day-to-day basis, if it's something that, you know, a nurse can come in and help them with and you can set that stuff up, that, that's one thing. But man, if, they, if your mom falls, like, what do you, like, she needs help. Go help her. You, I mean... And do you want to be tied to a dental chair the moment you get that phone call or that text that says, hey, your mom needs you? Hell no. I mean, nobody wants to feel like they can't be able to go and help. Now, I'm fortunate. My, My parents, my mom, lives basically down the street from me. A lot of you got family who lives across the country. I mean... Man, mine's an inconvenience. Yours is get on airplane, fly to parent, help parent, stay and help parent. And that's what we battle with with some of my own associates. They, you know, they got parents too, believe it or not. Go figure, right? They got parents. And we need to help them be able to be free. And so, so you may, if you're an associate, you may have an owner doctor who's willing to help you with this stuff. But I'm assuming most of you are actually owner doctors. Who are you going to be able to give that to? You can simply just say, well, I'm just going to write off that money and I'm not going to do it and I'll produce it another time and that's fine. But man, you got bills piling up. You got people at your office in your building that are counting on you. So you need to be constructing a life where you can go and do those things. I am not a planner. And so this almost sounds counterintuitive. I'm telling you right now to plan. You got to plan for this stuff because you know it's going to happen. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. I love being spontaneous. I hate planning anything because I always want to know what's going to happen. Like, is something better going to come up? Like, is, is, is there going to be a better something for me to do on a Friday night than maybe what people are trying to plan for me? Like, I want to be able to pivot. But the number of times that my, my buddy... And maybe I wouldn't even take as many trips as I do. We take a lot of trips with our friends. But like, there's a number of times where like my buddy will be like, okay, we're going up to North Carolina. We're going up to North Carolina. They'll plan this thing like six months in advance. And I will literally wait till that weekend before and say, okay, well, I'll, I'll book a place and I'll go with you. Because I, 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 I just like being spontaneous, I like knowing what my options are before I do it. But in this instance, you need to be planning and setting out What are the things you need to be doing now to make sure that when those emergencies come up, you're ready to deal with it? 
one of the things I was looking at a long time ago is, is there was an office that came up for sale that I thought about buying. It was a 40 something year old doctor. I don't remember exactly how old he was at the time, but it was a 40 something year old doctor. He went to unlock his gate and he was bitten by a spider and was paralyzed permanently at his right hand side. That was his drilling side, obviously. That was it. He could never work again. So I had to sell the office. Ah, I mean, wow. Talk about like wanting to check your locks on your gates before you ever touch them again, right? Gosh, like that sucks. But he did not have a plan in place. He didn't have a plan in place of what happens. What? How are you going to generate money if something happens to you? Well, my dad was working. Every year that was a thing. Like we would choose apparently the shittiest day of the year to finally say, let's go close the pool. You folks who live in the South have no idea what that is. If you live up North, you got to close the pool when it gets too cold outside. We said, let's close the pool. And somehow, you know, it could have been beautiful the day before, but we'll cho choose the day that it's raining and snowing or whatever, not snowing, but, but very windy and cold. And it'll go back to being beautiful the next day again, but still not s swimming weather. But <clears throat> we close the pool our dad's bringing stuff inside the house. It catches on something. He slips and he falls and he breaks his wrist. As a reminder, my dad was an oral surgeon when he was working. How much oral surgery did he do once he broke his wrist? How many associates did he have? What plan did he have in place to bring in money while his wrist was healing? You know the answer already. None. None at all. He had nothing in place. And so those bills pile up. Now, he ran a tight ship, so to a degree, it didn't affect him all that much, to be honest with you. And maybe that's a bad point to be bringing up right now, but I'll tell you, he sweated it out the whole time. Lost a lot of stomach lining the whole time doing it. Lost a lot of sleep. So, it's just one of those things you don't find out. I mean, luckily, he was be able to get back at it. What if you slip and fall and you break a wrist? You can't get back at it. Ah! That's... That's not great. <laughs> As I like to say, not great, Bob. You can't get back to doing what you're doing between getting bitten by a spider randomly. So you need to be planning for those, those stormy days ahead of time. And so there's many different ways to do that. And so I brought up the scenario before about, you know, I like to say is you can net half a million dollars a year working one day a week. Well, if you need to be other side of the country, you can make up one day a week real easily. It's very easy. You have six days off. You can choose six other days to make up that time that you were supposed to produce and go and help whoever needs help do whatever it is that you'd like to do. Be able to take vacations and go and do whatever it is that you'd like to do. And I love that. I did that for a real long time. Then I said, well, I'd like to be able to make money without me. And so now I have associates producing for me. We're in February, almost we'll call it March now. And I've worked about a total of about four days so far this year, which is nice. There's still things that I do. I like doing this. I love talking to you guys. This is fun. This is fun stuff. It's fun literally downloading all of the experiences that you've had professionally in your life and giving it to people. Because I didn't know how to get there. I had no idea how to get there. Now, my father helped me with my implant journey. And I can help you with your implant journey too. But I didn't have anyone to help guide me and take me to where I need to be or even be thinking about these things. Because my very first office, I opened right at the beginning of the great financial recession that occurred 2007, 2008, 2009. And I'll never forget. So I'm at that point in time, pretty young, but I'll never ever forget that. So we own the space and then the, the folks next door to us uh, in, the, in the condo building, they uh, ran the business uh, next to us, and they had some kind of construction company. You didn't want to be in construction in 2008, I'll tell you that much. And they went out of business. So we had become okay friends with these people, or acquaintances, we talked, whatever, when we saw each other. 
And so she comes in shortly after they had said that they, 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 their, their business was ban filing for bankruptcy and they were going out of business. But she also said they were going to defile for bankruptcy. This was a week later. A week. They filed for bankruptcy a week later because they had no savings. They had no emergency fund. They had no ability to pay their own bills for more than one week. These people were in their 50s. They were full-fledged, fully grown adults with with a nice business. They had a nice business. And they got, you know, it was a bad business to be in in that moment. But they had a nice business and they had nice things. They also had all of the nice, like, cars and stuff like that. So I start to think of, like, well, how much, obviously I know the answer now, how much were they planning on? How much were they preparing for a rainy day? And she literally said... That since the money was so good and coming in so fast, they never thought that that was the time to be preparing for things to go wrong. What the hell are you talking about, woman? That is the exact time to be preparing for things to be going wrong. So this kind of also becomes a thing about living within your means. And we talk about all these dentists who cannot retire at a reasonable age. We make a great living. You can bitch about how much money you make and maybe you don't think about you make that much money and we can help you make a whole lot more money and in a whole lot less time too. Generally speaking, even the bad dentists make a good living compared to the rest of the public. We do. We got a spending problem. So you need to create savings habits. A lot of people are just really bad with money. It's crazy. And I, I've always been a saver. I've, all, I've always been a saver. I got nice things, but I've always spent well below my income level. So I have always, I was taught long ago that I should only buy the fun things with the, the buy things that generate income and then spend money on the fun things from that income. So I bought, I'm, I love commercial real estate, love commercial real estate. It's the best. It's the absolute best. And I, I, I know people, you know, people love to get into like Airbnbs and like, cause you can have fun, cool properties. And like, we did that for a bit, but it's like, it's, it's the commercial stuff. I, I just, I love that stuff. So all my fun toys I buy with money from that. I don't, I don't use my personal income. I put my personal income away and then I buy things that generate income and then I buy the fun things with the money from that. That's where my fun stuff comes from. And But that way I've always got, I'm always ready. I'm always ready for the storm clouds. I'm always prepared. You might not like the storm clouds. That's not what I'm talking about. Man, no one, no one wants to deal with stuff. I completely get that. But when you have to deal with stuff and you have an economic stress on top of it, huh, man, again, going back to the whole thing about dealing with your mom, what do you, you have to get back, you have to get on a plane, fly across the country, go see your mom. You're sitting there in the hospital room with her and you're also thinking about what the hell's happened at the practice. Is it on fire? Well, how am I going to pay these people? How am I going to pay myself? That is a shitty situation. Because you want to be able to be there and present and take care of those people and do the things you need to do about being a loving son, daughter, husband, wife, whatever, so you can be present and focused and get that job done. Because it's a way more important job than running a dental business. It's way more important. Those people who love you, have taken care of you, that is the important job. That's what's important. But if you've got these things in the back of your head that you gotta worry about how I'm gonna make payroll, pay my water bill, man, it just makes it terrible. It makes it terrible because you're gonna be frustrated and you're probably also gonna take it out on that person that you've flown across the country to go and see. 
because you love them and you want to be there and you want to do those things. But if you got other things in your mind while you're doing it, oh man, it just, it ruins it all. It does. So you need to have a plan in place. And this is coming from the least planning person you will ever meet in your entire life. I have surrounded myself by people who do the planning for me because I can't do it. I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's laziness. It's, you know, I, I, who knows? Who knows what it is? Maybe I don't even know what to plan. I just know in retrospect what needed to be done. And that's why I can tell you things to do now because I've done it all. And I've screwed up enough times to tell you, well, don't do that. Do this instead because I've done it the other way and because I didn't plan to do it. But I've seen enough people not plan to be prepared for this. For when like Jim Cantori shows up at your house and says, this is ground zero of where the storm strike. And you're like, ah, I really should have been prepared before this. You need to have a plan in place. So you need to have a financial plan in place. You need to be putting money away so that you've got money right now for yourself in case of emergency. But generally speaking, what I'm talking about is you need to have a plan in place for your office. So when this stuff happens, you can drop that drill or more even ideally, not have ever even had the drill in your hand to begin with because you got associates who are doing the work for you and go and do those things. Be present for that. Be present for those things. And it's so much important, more important that you're able to do that than it is of you necessarily being able to be at the dental office and make sure that it's running it. There should be people at that office that you have trained and you have led and you have taught how to run that business without you. It should not need you. And if it does, you've got a broken... You, in fact, I'm not even call it a business. You don't have a broken business. You've got a job. you got a job. And your job needs you. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a business. Businesses generate money without you. That's what a business is. And if you can't say that, if you can't say the dental office you own generates money while you are not there, you have a job. You have created a job for yourself. There's a very famous book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And the E-Myth is, is most people who start a business don't start a business. They don't. They think they have. And they're like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. This is great. I've got a business. Most of the time, what you have done is you have created a job, which is noble unto itself, but we need to make the distinction there of the fact that you have created a job, not a business. And so what I am in the business of, which these podcasts don't happen without me, so I guess I don't have a business, but what I am in the business of is, is creating businesses for you so that it is generating money without you or really you don't need to be there at all. And it's going to be just fine because that is freedom. That is freedom of time and that is freedom of money and it is very, very doable and we can help you do that. Just head on over there to titaniumpractice.com and get a little bit more information on that. Make sure you've downloaded our book, Forging Your Freedom. That is a big jump start. Making yourself the specialist, the super GP. It's a huge step and being able to create a business that does not need you and generates huge profits for you so that you can drop what you're doing when the storm clouds are headed for your door. Okay? I love you all. Thank you very much for listening to this latest episode. Uh, please check in at titaniumpractice.com and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Please hit the like and subscribe button and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Titanium Practice. Questions or comments? Send an email to info at titaniumpractice.com. Join us next time to help turn your average practice into a titanium practice.